Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be going over how to convert a PS1 or a PowerShell script into a .exe. So it's going to be an executable. You can um, put it on a USB stick, put it on any computer. As long as you put all the dependencies in the package that we're going to be creating, uh, it should work on any computer. So this was actually a request from Alf Barry Roca. I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, but I thought this could actually benefit quite a lot of people. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So what I'm actually going to do, we're not going to be making any PowerShell scripts um, in this video. Instead, I'm just going to pick a old project that we've done. Uh, so I'm actually picking the CSV splitter um, in a GUI format because um, I figure like most of the people would want to create EXEs of GUIs. Um, so let's just open up this script here in PowerShell. Uh, and this is the exact same script that we made um, in the tutorial video. Um, there's been no modifications to it. So we're going to make some slight modifications to it because right now, if we take this and convert it to a .exe, it will not work properly. Um, we're actually going to get some errors and um, it's, it's not going to be great and it's not going to be very portable either. So we're going to want to fix this up. Um, and then I will show you guys how to make a .exe. So first, actually, I'm going to show you guys what would happen if we make this a .exe right now, just so you guys can see what happens um, and you guys can see the kind of errors that we would get. So uh, let's just close out of PowerShell here. So the first step we're going to want to do is um, search for IE uh, Express. So just I Express. And then you're going to want to run this as administrator. Do not run this uh, just by clicking it. You definitely have to run it as administrator, or else you will get errors in the last step of creating the cabinet file. Um, so definitely run this as administrator. So the first step we're going to want to do is create new self-extraction directive file. And then uh, for the package purpose, we are going to leave it at the default, which is extract files and run an installation command. And then the package title, this could be anything you really want. We're just going to call it CSV split. Uh, and confirmation prompt, we're not going to give a prompt at all. We're not going to display a license agreement. Now in the packaged files, because our CSV splitter actually had other files that belonged to it. So um, I actually see that this will actually not work. So let me just copy the file that I need here. So we have our XML, our XAML file that we've had, and we have our script. And we know that our script calls our XAML file because if I open up our script here just really quickly, we do see that we do reference that XAML file. So we need to package this in our package. So we're going to add files, and we're going to add our XAML file, and we are going to add our script file here. All right, and then we're going to click on Next. And now we're going to have an install program to launch. And then the install program is going to give you a dropdown with nothing in it, but we're actually going to be typing something in here. So we are going to be typing powershell.exe then space dash execution policy all one word and then we're going to do a space we're going to put bypass then space dash file and then you're going to put in your powershell script name so for us right now it's just uh, youtube dash csv splitter dot ps1 all right we're going to click on next now for the show window we are going to leave it as default because we want to show the window if you're making a dot exe of a script that just kind of runs in the background and generates a file you could do it as hidden but as soon as you want like a user interaction you're going to want to leave it as default and then the finished message we're just going to display no message at all then the package name and options. So this is going to be creating your .exe name. So we're just going to create it in the same folder here. We're just going to call it CSV split. 
and we're going to do save. And then for the options, we are going to want to check both of these options here because we want to hide the file extraction process from the user that we don't want them to see it. And we want to store the files using the long name, long file name inside the package. And what this does, um, it just kind of makes it work nicer. If you do want it to work on Windows 95 for some reason, it needs to be left unchecked. But besides that, just give it a check. It's a lot easier to reference your files that way. So we're just going to click on yes here. Uh, like I said, do not check this if you want your scripts to work on Windows 95. I think you would have more issues with the script itself running on Windows 95 than that option um, because of the .NET frameworks that we're using in this case. Um, but we're just going to click on Next here. And then the Configure Restart, we are going to do a no restart here because we know that we don't need to restart after the script runs. And then save the self-extraction. You could just leave it at the default location. It'll save it wherever you saved your .exe. And we're going to click on Next and then Next again. It creates the package. So here we have the package. And if we click on it, it seems to work just fine. Now, if I actually go ahead and uh, just click on Finish here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away this file. I'm just going to cut it out here. And then I'm going to try to run this again. And there we are. So we get an error because in the script, we are still referencing this direct file location. So if we ever brought this exe to another computer and it didn't have the folder called scripts csv splitter and then this csv splitter form it wouldn't work so it's, it's not very portable and really there was no point in us packaging that xaml file so let's go ahead and let's just delete these files that we've created here and let's open up our powershell script here to modify it so we're going to add one line at the top here. So we've added the presentation framework because we do the import XAML from Visual Studio. But there should be another thing that we also import. We should be importing um, the system.windows.forms framework just in case that computer doesn't know where to find that type there. So let's do a add-type assembly name system dot windows dot forms and then what we're going to want to do for our xaml file is we are actually just going to want to replace the file path with just the file name because when we are running that script it's going to look in that same directory as the script is running in so if we just put the file name it'll find it no problem in that package so that's all we really need to do Another thing that I want to do, um, because as, we've, as we see here, when we run this, we actually get an output to the console. Um, I don't really want to show this to the user. Uh, so all we need to do here is just get rid of this line 26, get dash variable var underscore star. Once that's done, we can go ahead and save this. So I'm just going to save this as CSV splitter, just so it's a little bit of a shorter name. All right, so now all of our modifications are done. Let's go ahead and let's run the iExpress again. Once again, we're going to run it as administrator. We are going to create a new self-extraction directive file. We are just extracting the files and running an installation command. Our file package is just going to be csv split or let's do csv splitter and we're going to do no prompt no license and let's add our files in here so we're going to add our csv splitter our csv splitter form we're going to click on next so here again we are going to do powershell dot exe dash execution policy now the reason why we're doing the dash execution policy bypass is we do not know the execution policy that's going to be on the computer that we're putting this script on. So what we're doing is we're telling PowerShell to open up in the execution policy of bypass. So just bypass any execution policy that that person has. 
and open up the file CSV splitter.ps1. So here is our first example of we don't need to reference a file, like we don't need to say C uh, scripts, uh, CSV splitter, CSV splitter.ps1. All we need to do is just put in the file name because it's going to be in that directory that it's running out of. So once we have that, we're just going to click on next. Show window is going to be on default. We're going to display no message. Let's uh, save our exe to CSV splitter and save. And then again, we are going to check box these two boxes here. We don't want to initiate the restart. And we are going to save the self extraction file and we are going to create the package. It is all done. Let's click on finish here and let's see if this runs. It does run. So now let's give it a test here. So I actually do have a CSV file here called names. So we see here it does have 100 names in here. So if we pick a file, we pick our names file, we hit validate. We see that it does validate just like we're supposed to. We pick our folder. Let's pick our folder. We're going to pick the same folder here. So scripts, CSV splitter. We are going to split it into two files. Just we can easily see um, if it's worked. Split. All right. So it tells us it's put it into C scripts, CSV splitter output dash one dot CSV. So let's just go ahead and let's exit out of here. And here we are. We have our two files. We have one through 50 here. And we have 51 through 100 here. So everything worked great. We have a exe. And now, like I showed you guys last time, I took away that XAML file. So let's take away the XAML file one last time. And the script still runs. So we don't get the error where it just crashes right away. So that is perfect. It loaded up our form. So that is how you make a .exe from a PS1 file um, or a PowerShell script file. There are a lot of other ways. Uh, there are PowerShell modules to make them. The reason why I showed you guys this way is this is just built into Windows. Um, as soon as you install Windows, you have iExpress. Um, so it's very easy to create and package your dependencies very easily. Um, I just find it easier. It's already it's already there. You don't need to download anything extra. You don't need to learn anything crazy about it. Um, it's not in an IDE. It doesn't limit you to use Visual Studio Code or PowerShell ISC. You can use any um, coding environment you really want, and it's quite easy to use. So. I hope you guys liked this video, so like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. If you guys have any suggestions on videos that you guys want to see, or if you guys have questions that you guys want answered, and maybe if I find it super useful like this one, I will make a video for you guys. So put that down in the comments below, and I will see you guys on the next video.